All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a mobile menu using Shadsian UI. Now, this is a quick demo of what we're going to be building. It's not going to look that pretty. I haven't spent too much time on the styling of this. I just want to show you the functionality and how we can set up the foundation for a mobile menu. So we can see here we've got this mobile menu icon. If we click on the icon, we can see it nicely pops out from the right hand side. And we have this nice drag effect where we can swipe or drag to close that menu. So let's take a look at how we can build this out then. I've already got a bare bones Next.js project up and running on my local machine. And I've also got the ShadCN UI draw component installed. Now we're going to be building upon this draw component to be able to implement this sort of mobile menu functionality. Additionally, I also have the use media query hook copied from the ShadCN UI repo. So all you need to do is head on over to this particular URL here and copy the use media query code. And I've pasted it in to my example project here into a new directory called hooks and into use-media-query.tsx. So this is where I've pasted the use media query hook in. And we're going to need to use this hook when we build out our mobile menu functionality, because if we quickly take a look at my completed project here, if we open up the menu, ideally, when we increase the screen size above a tablet screen size, then we'll completely remove the mobile menu. So we'll only display the mobile menu if we're on a small screen size. However, if we're on medium screen sizes and above, for example, I think I've got the breakpoint here set to 768. So anything under 768 pixels for the screen width, then we will display that mobile menu. So first things first then, I've already got my projects already set up. I've got my use media query hook already copied from the ShadCN UI documentation or the ShadCN UI GitHub repo. I've already got in components and UI, I've already installed the draw component from ShadCN UI. So first things first is if we open up our app directory and for the page.tsx, I'm just going to gut all of this out and just keep the main tag here. I'm going to say main page here. Then let's remove this import at the top here for the next image. Then in the app and layout.tsx, ideally, this is where we're going to have our mobile menu. With that said, though, we need to create a client component for our main menu functionality because we're going to need a bunch of JavaScript to run in the browser for this component to actually work. So first of all, within our components, I'm going to create a new file here called main-menu.tsx. Let's export default function main menu. And I'm just going to return a div here just for now. And at the top of this component, of course, we need to use the use client directive because this is going to be a client component. Now, first things first, we want to use the use a media query hook because as part of our main menu, we're going to either show or hide the mobile menu if we're on a mobile screen or a larger screen size. So we'll hide or show depending on the screen size. So to do this, we can go const is desktop and set this equal to use media query, which we need to import to the top here from add slash hooks slash use dash media dash query. Remember, this is the use media query hook we copied from the ShadCN UI GitHub repo. And we just want to add a string in here using any valid CSS media query. So for example, I'm going to have min width here set to 768 pixels like so. I need to close off that bracket. So this media query will match if our screen size is below 768 pixels, then is desktop will be false. If the min width, i.e. the screen width is 768 pixels and above, then is desktop will be true. So what we want to do is check to see if is desktop. If is desktop, for now, let's just render a div that will say desktop, else we'll render a div that will say mobile. So let's add mobile in here. And we've got a curly brace here. We don't need that curly brace. So we want to check is desktop, we'll render desktop, else we'll render mobile. So let's just check to see this is all working correctly. Let's run npm run dev in the terminal. Let's take a look at localhost. I've got it on 3002 here. Let's take a look in the browser. And we're not actually seeing anything on the screen, and that is because I haven't actually rendered this main menu component. So we need to, in our app and layout.tsx, let's render above the children for the body. Let's render the main menu component, which we need to import at the top of our file here from add slash components slash main dash menu. So save this now and take a look in the browser. We should see desktop here. So let's reduce the screen size then, the screen width, 
And there we go. We can see we're rendering the mobile label. If we bring it up above 768, we're rendering desktop. So let's cater for then as part of our mobile logic here. This is where we want to render our trigger for our draw that will slide in from the right. So we want to render the draw component, which we need to import from dot slash UI slash draw. So we're importing the Shansian UI draw component. As part of the draw component, we need a draw trigger. Now this draw trigger again will be imported from UI slash draw. And all the draw trigger is doing is it's rendering something that whenever we click it, our draw will appear or our draw will open. So we want to render some menu icon in here. And conveniently, Lucide, which comes out of the box with Shadzian UI, or it gets installed as part of our Shadzian UI setup, it comes out of the box with Lucide React and a menu icon in Lucide React. So we can just render this menu icon as part of our draw trigger. Then finally, all we need is some draw content. So let's add draw content underneath the draw trigger. And again, we need to import this component, the draw content component, from UI slash draw. I'm going to say something like some draw content in here. So let's save this now and take a look in the browser and see what we've got. If we reduce the screen size down, we can now see we're rendering our mobile menu icon. Let's click on this icon and there we go. We can see a draw appears from the bottom. And of course, we can drag this and drag to close. We've got that really nice drag functionality there, which is ideal on mobile. And before we implement this on the right hand side, let's increase the screen size. And we can see because we're on desktop, we don't render the draw. So we completely remove the draw from the DOM. But then if we reduce the screen size down, we can see then we can still enable and or show and hide that draw. So again, that's exactly why we've got the use media query hook. So just in case the user increases the screen size from a mobile screen, ideally we don't want that draw to be still be hanging about as part of our UI. We only want the draw to be part of the UI for the mobile UI. With that said, as part of our draw then, in the Shadsian UI documentation, if we head on over to the draw documentation, the documentation isn't actually that extensive, even though it does give some basic usage, it doesn't actually show how we can trigger a draw to pop out from the right-hand side. Now, this is actually native behavior in Vol, which the draw component in Shadsian UI is based upon. So in Vol, we can actually make the draw appear from the right-hand side. However, it doesn't quite work exactly as expected when we use this functionality with the Shadsian UI draw component. So we need to modify this draw component to cater for the draw being opened or the draw being opened and opening from the right hand side. Now, again, this is the whole point of Shadsian UI. We can copy the code for all of these components and modify these components. However, we need to fit into our own apps. So again, let's head on back to our code then. As part of this draw component, because the draw is essentially a wrapper around Vol, we can specify a direction here and we can set this to bottom, left, right, or top. Now we want to set a direction here of right. So if we save this now then and take a look in the browser, let's give it a refresh. Let's see what happens now if I try and open the draw. And there we go. We kind of have the functionality we're expecting. The draw is opening from the right, but there's a bunch of styling missing for the draw to behave exactly how we need it to behave. However, if we try and drag the draw to the right, we can see that the drag functionality does actually work. So the drag to close functionality does actually work depending on the direction we specify on the draw component. However, the styling is completely messed up. So let's go ahead and fix this then. Let's head on back to our code. And ideally what we want to do is we need to modify the draw content styles depending on the direction of the draw component. Now, if we drill into our components UI and draw.tsx, if we scroll down to our draw content, it's within the draw content component that we need to modify these styles specifically. So it's on the draw primitive dot content component. So we need to update the class name based on the direction that's specified for the draw component. Now, ideally, we don't want to pass a prop to the draw content. If we take a look at our implementation, and actually it's in the main menu here, if we take a look at the implementation, we don't want to be specifying a direction on both the draw and the draw content. Ideally, we just specify the direction on the draw and then we want to access the direction prop from any nested component that may need that direction prop, i.e. if our draw content component needs to read any props from the draw component, this is where we need to modify the 
draw content component. So ideally, we're going to use React context for this. So if we head on over to our components UI and draw, right at the top of this file here, let's create some new context. So I'm going to create a const draw context here and set this equal to React dot create context and our default value is just going to be an empty object but because create context is a generic we need to pass the type to create context and we want to say that the context could potentially contain a direction value or a direction property and because direction is optional it's not a required prop we're going to set this as optional here but if there is a value set for direction, we need to specify that it can only be set to top, bottom, left, or right. So in this tutorial, we're only going to be taking a look at how we can cater for the direction being set to, uh, what is it, bottom and right. We're not going to cater for top and left. However, all you're going to need to do to cater for top and left is update the styling in the section we're about to update the styling in. So it's going to be incredibly easy to implement top and left as part of the draw component. However, we're just going to concentrate on bottom. So actually bottom is the default and right, which is what we're going to start implementing now. So as part of our draw context, then we want to wrap our draw in the draw context. So let's wrap our draw component in draw context dot provider. So let's wrap then that draw component, the draw primitive dot root in the draw context dot provider. And we want to set a value here and we want to set direction equal to props dot direction. So if we pass a direction into the draw component, we're going to then update the value of our draw context. And specifically, we're going to update the direction value for our draw context, which means then we can consume this context in our draw content component. So down in our draw content, let's add a return statement here. So let's update this to add a return statement. And just above the return statement, then we want to use the draw context. So in here, we can destructure direction, set this equal to use context. And actually, we need to set it equal to react dot use context. And we want to pass in the draw context. So the draw context like so. So now we have access to the direction value that was passed as part of the draw component from within the draw content component. So what we need to do now then is update our class names within our draw primitive dot content based on the direction that we pass to the draw component. So above this class name, then we want to check to see if the direction and actually if direction doesn't have a value, we want to check first. So if direction doesn't have a value or direction is equal to bottom, i.e. this is the default state where the draw slides up from the bottom, then we want to render or we want to apply some Tailwind CSS class names. Specifically, we want to apply the inset x zero, the bottom zero. And let's see, we want the MT24. And I think that's pretty much it. So we want to move these class names then, because remember, these class names are assuming that the draw is sliding up from the bottom by default. We want to move these class names into our logic here where we check in to see if there is no direction specified or if direction is equal to bottom. Then we add the Tailwind CSS class names, which will enable that draw to slide up from the bottom. So again, we want the MT24. Let's move that over there. We want to add another case as well where direction is equal to right. So we want to check to see if direction is equal to right. Then we want to specify some other Tailwind CSS class names. Specifically, we're going to need a top zero, a right zero, a width screen. So this will span the full width of the screen. However, we also want a max width. So there'll be a nice spacing on the left hand side where we can see the black transparent background and also where we can click on that background to close the draw. I'll explain it to you now. I'll demonstrate it to you now. So ideally, we'll have a max width of something like 80. So it'll be a max width of 320 pixels. And let's add an edge full. So our draw will span the full height of the screen. So if we save this now, then this all should work. So if we take a look in the browser and let's give localhost a refresh, let's click on our draw trigger. And there we go. Our draw is displaying from the right hand side. It's coming in from the right hand side and we've added that max width. So I think it looks nice with a max width here. However, if we go below that max width, then we just fill the width of the screen. So if we click on this black background, it will automatically close the draw. Also, we can drag as well. We've got that nice drag effect. 
dragging to close the drawer. Now there's probably one last thing we need to do here and it's probably difficult to see in the light mode I've got enabled here, but there is a sort of notch here that's specific for the sliding up. So sliding up from the bottom. It's gonna be a lot easier if I show you in dark mode. So I'm gonna quickly head on back to my code here for layout.tsx. I'm gonna add a dark class name. So let's add a dark class name to body. Let's take a look in the browser now. It's a little bit easier to see. We've got this notch here which ideally is only going to be visible anytime the drawer slides up from the bottom. We're not gonna display it if the drawer is sliding in from the right. So again, let's fix this if we head on back to our code. Within our, let's see, within our draw component, so components UI and draw, what we wanna do is it's this particular div here that's rendering that sort of notch effect. Ideally, what we'll do is check to see if no direction is set or if direction is equal to bottom, only then will we render this div, this notch. We want to wrap this in brackets as well. So we'll only render this notch if the direction is sliding in from the bottom. So let's take a look in the browser now. Let's open up our drawer and there we go. This is looking a lot cleaner. So this is the very simple way we can create a mobile menu using Shad CNUI and the Shad CNUI draw component. Again, this is the whole point of Shad CNUI is we can modify the Shad CNUI code to fit into our use cases and our needs for our own apps.